Hey everyone, Will here. So for today's video, we are going to be analyzing the 1979 National March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights. That means we're going to be going over all aspects of this civil rights protest, including the origins of this march, the importance of this march, and the legacy of this march. So without further ado, let's begin. So the 1979 National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights was a large lesbian and gay rights protest that took place in Washington, D.C. on October 14, 1979. This protest was significant for having between 75,000 and 125,000 gay men, lesbian women, bisexual individuals, transgender people, and straight allies in attendance. The driving purpose of this protest was to demand equal rights for LGBTQ Americans, while also urging the passage of protective civil rights legislation. So the story behind the 1979 National March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights begins back in 1973 during Thanksgiving weekend in Urbana-Champaign, Illinois. At this time, the National Gay Mobilizing Committee for a March on Washington, or the NGMC under the leadership of Jeff Grobert, attempted to unite a variety of LGBTQ advocacy groups under the purpose of organizing a march on Washington. While such efforts ultimately failed, they did lay the groundwork for the eventual march that would take place in Washington, D.C. The next organizational attempt occurred in Minneapolis, Minnesota from November 17th to November 19th in 1978. During early discussions regarding such a march, a steering committee was formed to help transform the gay rights movement from a localized movement to a national one. Unfortunately, however, this committee prematurely ended in October of 1978 due to infighting. Despite the initial setback, a member of the Minneapolis Steering Committee and an elected official named Harvey Milk managed to continue the work of organizing a national march. Through his work, Harvey Milk managed to secure support from several LGBTQ groups in Washington, D.C. before he was tragically assassinated on November 27, 1978. The assassination of Harvey Milk encouraged organizers to move forward with the march in his memory. These organizers set up a conference in Philadelphia that would be used to discuss the details of this march from February 23rd to February 25th in 1979. The conference in Philadelphia sought to address whether or not a march should take place. After the conference chose to move forward with the march, an initial debate emerged over whether the march should take place in 1979 or 1980. Eventually, the conference settled on holding the march in 1979 in order to commemorate the 10-year anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, which is widely considered to be one of the most important events leading up to the gay liberation movement in the 20th and 21st centuries. Once this debate was settled, the conference set forth five primary demands that would serve as the official platform for the march. The five main demands were to pass a comprehensive gay and lesbian rights bill in Congress, to issue an executive order banning discrimination based on sexual orientation in the federal government, the military, and federally contracted private employment, to repeal all anti-lesbian and gay laws, to end discrimination in lesbian mother and gay father custody cases, and to protect lesbian and gay youth from any laws that were used to discriminate, oppress, and harass them in their homes, schools, and public places. The National Steering Committee was selected during community meetings throughout the country. As this was happening, Policy and administrative committees were formed to guide the work and decisions between steering committee meetings. Later on, a national office was assembled for the march, with Joyce Hunter and Stephen Alt acting as national coordinators for the protest. 
A final organizational push for the march then occurred at the University of Houston from July 6th to July 8th in 1979. Some of the major organizations supporting the march included Lambda Legal Defense Fund, the National Coalition of Black Lesbians and Gays, the National Gay Task Force, and the National Organization for Women. So the march itself was led by the Salsa Soul Sisters and began at 4th Street and the National Mall. From here, protesters turned left onto Philadelphia Avenue, moving northwest towards the White House. After that, the protesters turned left onto 15th Street, right onto E Street, and left onto 17th Street. The event then ended with a rally that was held between the Washington Monument and the reflecting pool. This protest was notable for being broadcasted on multiple national public radio affiliates across the country. An opening welcome address was made to the marchers by Mayor Marion Barry of the District of Columbia. Some additional speakers at the rally included Allen Ginsberg, Peter Orlovsky, Morris Kite, Flo Kennedy, Audrey Lord, Harry Britt, Charlotte Bunch, Kate Millett, Troy Perry, Adele Starr, Ted Weiss, Leonard Matlovich, and Eleanor Smeal. Additionally, Jock Church and Adam Chesielski recorded a documentary vinyl LP of the main speeches at the event. The recording includes the voices of Allen Ginsberg, Tom Robinson, Arlie Scott, Kate Millett, Troy Perry, Charles Law, Richard Ashworth, Lucia Valeska, Stephen Alt, Robin Tyler, Mary Watkins, and Flo Kennedy. The final recording was released by Magnus Records in Sacramento, California in association with Alternate Publishing. In addition to the march, organizers also set up three days of workshops featuring artistic events, strategy sessions, focus groups on issues facing women and minorities in the LGBTQ community, among other topics. The Monday after the march was organized as a constituent lobbying day, in which over 500 participants worked to try and contact every member of Congress to express support for gay rights legislation. The participants in the lobbying day successfully met with 50 senators and over 150 House members in Congress. Overall, the 1979 National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights played a major role in the LGBTQ civil and political rights movement, further nationalizing and publicizing the movement for full equality for LGBTQ identifying individuals. Thank you for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more additional content. If you have any ideas for a future video topic, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see me cover next. I'm really hoping to grow this channel and provide you all with more content in the future, and your support means the world to me. Thanks everyone!